Hello students, this is a video walkthrough of the Students with Special Needs Lesson Plan Project, Part 1, Concept Map. The first thing we're going to go over is exactly what is a concept map. If you've never used one before, a concept map, shown here as an example, is simply a visual organizer. It organizes topics, connects ideas, abstract thoughts, and it all branches from a central topic or idea in the middle. So this could be useful to you as an educator or for your students, such as taking notes, organizing an event, outlining a research project, or maybe an essay, or as we're gonna use it today, to help design a lesson plan. The first thing you're gonna do is create yourself a MindMeister account. Now, I already have an account, so I'm not going to go through those steps because it won't look the same. But all you need to do is go to MindMeister.com. The link is in the module for this week. And you need to follow the steps to create your own MindMeister free account. Make sure you take the free version and not the upgraded version. We're looking for the legacy version. MindMeister currently has two different versions. One um, wants you to upgrade and the other is the legacy version. That's the one we're going to use. If you need help with these steps or you're not sure how to activate your account, please feel free to give me a call, contact me in any way, and I'll be sure to help you out. So using your Google sign-in, you'll be able to create an account. And when you do, you'll get to a screen that looks like this one. Now up at the top, what you'll see, this is called the dashboard. What you'll see is some templates. And they have these very fancy templates with backgrounds and so forth. You're welcome to use those. Um, or they have the basic templates, aligned, org chart, and right aligned. And then they have this plus sign. The plus sign allows you to have a few more options. Um, if you use the plus sign, you'll see new mind map and new mind map legacy. If you're creating a new map, you always want to use the legacy for this particular version of MindMeister um, because that's the one, again, that we don't have to worry about this upgrade. With the legacy version, you get up to three mind maps or concept maps without having to pay. And as you can see down below here is a list of mind maps. Currently, I only have one. And then it gives you this promotional piece that stays there all the time. So the way I get around the three free maps is if I need a fourth map, and I still have three sitting here, it will automatically show me that I need to upgrade and I can't get around it. But what I do is I just go and I can click these three buttons here and I can always move a map to trash or get rid of it. So I only keep three at a time or you can just create or use another email address, create another MindMeister account and then you have three more maps. So that's up to you. But we're just gonna use the free version. We're only gonna use one map. So this should be good for you to do. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm going to select the aligned template because it's just easy to use. And we're gonna click and it automatically opens up a new map and takes us to the desktop for MindMeister. And so I'm gonna give you a quick tour of this whole area. The first thing we're gonna look at is the zoom in zoom out and if you hover over any of these items it'll show you what the button does and then a recenter the recenter is if your mind map or your concept map gets really big you can always recenter it in the middle of your desktop here then we're going to go to the top right here and we have a plus sign that says add an idea or we can use the tab button we can add a relationship or we can use alt c and there's also delete an idea, which is just the delete key. And the standard undo, redo. And then there's this wonderful little area over here, which is all of the different icons and features that it has. If yours is not opened up like mine, it may look something like this. To get it to open up, there's these three lines over here. You just click it and it opens it up. We'll go over each of these features uh, shortly as we're building our concept map. 
in the bottom left, what we have are some history and a couple other buttons we're not going to use. This task button is something that's in the new version that we're not going to use so we don't have to pay. And then there's a share button, which we will use. We'll get to that later. This open with new editor, again, that's the new version we don't want to use at this time, but you're welcome to look at it later. A download button and a print button. Excellent. Okay, so that's our tour. We also have the name of our map is up here. And it's the same as what it says in the central topic area. So once I change this, the name of our map will change. So for our assignment, what we're going to do is we're going to build a lesson plan based on an Ohio Common Core standard. And that Common Core standard you pick, if you're not sure how to do that, go back and look at the video from uh, one of the first couple weeks that shows you how to uh, look at the Common Core standards. Uh, but you're going to go ahead and pick one. And I picked one from third grade science. And the third grade science one that I picked, and I'm just going to highlight the words in here so I can type over them. The one that I picked is living things have basic needs obtained from the physical environment. Hopefully I spelled everything okay. So that's my central concept. Now this might be something that I'm teaching over a day, a week, a month, however you do it. This is just the central concept. So from here then, your instructions say that you need a four second level branches, which are general subtopics or themes that come from the central concept. So in order to get a branch or another set of ideas, we're just gonna tab right from this middle. And you can see it gives a connector and then a space to type. So thinking of four themes that I could get from this central concept, I came up with food. And in order to add another branch on the same level, this would be the second level branch, I just need to hit enter and then enter again. So I came up with food, shelter, two enters, water, enter, enter, and air. So if I accidentally hit enter twice again, I get this extra one I don't need. I simply can just go back and it'll delete it. If I have one here, I could hit the delete button. It would delete the air piece. So that's the way that you can get rid of any of these extra ones. But for right now, I've got these four kind of general themes. So I like that, that's good. The next branch we're gonna do, it says one third level branch, which is a learning objective associated with one of these topics. Okay, so you could do one for each of these second level branches, but for the assignment, for sake of time, I'm just going to do one and I'm gonna build that all the way out to an activity. So I'm going to expand my second level branch shelter by hitting the tab key and I'm going to create a learning objective. Now, some of you may not have even gotten to learning objectives as far as how to create one. That's okay. I do give you a little bit of information in the written instructions about learning objectives and creating them. If you haven't used Bloom's Taxonomy, then go back to the written instructions and there's a link to Bloom's Taxonomy that you can use. But they're basically just action verbs, which is how you always want to create a learning objective. And a learning objective basically is what you want the students to be able to do or know by the time they get done with this particular level or that information piece. In this case, talking about shelter. So for mine, what I created was I want them to be able to create a shelter for an animal based on its physical environment. So again, because of time, I would have probably put a lot more before this particular learning objective. So I might have said they need to research an animal, they need to um, research shelters, they need to research the habitat. Any of those things could also be expanded here, but we're just doing one. So I just went right to um, something that's related to the activity that we're going to do. So that is our 
one, two, third level branch. So we've got our learning objective, which is great. Now we're going to keep going with that idea. And for our fourth level branch, we need two things. We need an idea for an activity and then also a note or comment describing the equipment needed for the activity. So, okay, I'm just going to make sure again that I'm in the branch, the third level branch that I want to expand. I'm going to hit tab. And for this fourth level branch, what I'm going to do is, first of all, let myself know that this is an activity. And I'm going to say that we're going to use art supplies to build a shelter appropriate for a selected animal. Awesome. Okay. So if I want them to be able to create a shelter, I'm going to ask them to create a shelter. And then it says to add a note of the supplies that I might need. So again, these are just helpful things that you can do. So in order to do that, we're going to actually start using some of the items over here on our menu. So I'm going to go over some of them and then we'll get to the comment or note piece here in a minute. So first of all, anything up here is all about the text. I can make the text bigger. I can make it bold. I can make it italic. And if I don't want some of those things I turned on, I simply can turn them off. Also, I can change the color. So if you're a visual person and you want to color code some things, you certainly can do that. So as far as the colors go, down here I have highlighted text. So anything I do with colors is going to affect the text in the box that I've turned on. If you want to change the actual shapes themselves and put colors in there, you certainly can do that. So again, I can change the colors of the background, but I just need to be on background when I do that. Feel free to play with this. It's fine with me if you want to change colors and make it fancy. And then the next items are, they have some wonderful uh, emojis or they call them icons. Uh, these are just some visual representations of some things. So maybe if you're having your students create concept maps, you can have them put some of these in there just to remind them what they're working on. For example, if I want to do uh, a shelter based on a bear, I can add a bear emoji or a bear icon. And they do have a lot of fun ones. So if you click this little uh, choose icon button, you can see that there's a whole bunch that you can choose from, which is really fun. You could also use them to like number steps if you want. And then you just click the left button to go back here. So those are the emojis. You can add pictures. It does cost uh, an upgrade if you try to do certain pictures. So that's why I didn't include this in your assignment. But if you did want to add an image, you can upload one. You can find it on the web. You can draw one. They also have some a couple of 50 images that you can use for free. Uh, again, they're very limited, so um, I don't use them a whole lot. Um, and then any images that you've uploaded, you can put here. And then the last is this video where I can uh, browse YouTube videos. And what's neat about this tool is that it takes whatever text is in there and it tries to find videos based on that. So when it comes to art supplies, I'll get a bunch of different videos for that. So that's kind of fun. If you don't want those videos, you want to look for something different, you can just highlight and type in a search and find YouTube videos for yourself. So right, we'll do that in a little bit. We're not going to do that right at the moment. And then what we're going to get to down here are, uh, this is a like a sticky note. So you could use this. Or the one that I put in the instructions is a comment. Since these maps are collaborative, you could actually have more than one person working on it. So you might want to add something and then people can comment on whether they like that idea or not. This is the thumbs up, thumbs down kind of voting thing. Um, so that's neat. And then there's links and you can add a document or a file. And then also you can add a task. I'm not going to do this one because it does open up the upgraded version and we're not going to use those. 
But for now, uh, according to this step, we need to add a note or a comment. So I'm going to click on the comment. And I'm going to add a list of things I need for this activity. So I put down art supplies, markers, glue, scissors, and cardboard. Awesome. So now I need to add this to this particular item here. So I'm going to hit the enter button and you'll see that it added the icon right here. You also see that our map is getting kind of big. So I'm going to use this reposition and it moves it over so I can see it. So the whole thing is centered in my view. So if I hover over this, it'll show me my note or my comment. And if it was bigger than this, I could expand it and it would show like a paragraph or something larger if I added more text. So, okay, we've got the one, two, three, fourth level or fourth branch, fourth level branch. And now it says we need to add three fifth level branches and it gives us the three adaptations that we're going to be thinking about when we create our lesson plan. So again, I'm going to just tap to create a fifth level branch and I need to add these three adaptations and they are adaptation for students with disability, hit enter twice, an adaptation for talented and gifted students two enters, and an adaptation for cultural, ethnic, or language students. Great, okay. Now for the concept map, I'm not gonna have you actually list the disabilities or the ways that you're going to adapt um, your activity for these three. We're going to actually do that in the lesson plan part of this project. But for right now, we're going to list sources that we use to figure out those adaptations. So what we're going to do is we're going to need two links to websites and one YouTube video for our requirements. So I've already found a few sites that I have open and I'm going to go ahead and add those. So for students with disability, we're doing a diorama here. So I went and searched and I did find a really good article about uh, using tech tools to enhance a traditional diorama, which is really neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and control C to copy the URL. And I'm gonna open up this link icon and it shows me a URL box. I just paste it using control V. And if you're on a Mac, for example, you may have different codes besides Control-C, Control-V. So use the ones that are uh, available for Mac. So I've got my URL and all I need to do is hit enter and then place that icon where I want it to be. You can put more than one resource in a branch. So if I wanted to also put a note or YouTube video, all of that can be put in one. But for now, we're just going to do one per adaptation. So I've got another one for um, the cultural ethnic language students. So again, this is anything that we could tie back to someone's culture, their ethnicity, or maybe they are not, uh, English is not their first language. So in this case, I love Minecraft for education. If you've ever played Minecraft, it's a lot of fun. It also for the education version, which is different, than the general gameplay version, you can change the language that's on there. So they can perhaps do a uh, language specific version of a project in Minecraft. So I'm going to just go ahead and uh, use the minecraft.com location because that's where I'm gonna look to find how I do this. So again, I'm going to just copy that URL I'm going to put it in the URL box and then place it in the branch item that I wanna host it in. So again, I've got my two links right here and now I just need to add a YouTube video. 
So if we remember, we just go up here to this video icon and we click it and I can browse videos and it's looking for gifted and talented uh, student videos. And there's some really neat ones that pop up. But I want to look specifically for Minecraft for education videos. And for the essence of time, I'm just going to pick one that comes up. But you'll see there's several. If I don't like those, I can research more and put those in there. But once you find one that you want, you just simply click the select video. It activates the use selected video button. You click enter and voila. Here is our video. So it's right handy. I can see how it branches out. I can see the links if I need to all in one spot. And again, if I my map is getting too big, you notice I use my left mouse button. I held it down and I can move the map any way I want so I can see it better. So excellent. This is all that I need to complete the requirements for this project. So now I just need to hit the save button. Hmm, there's no save button. That's because this is a lot like your Google Sites. You don't need a save button. It's always going to be there. Any changes you make will be there, but you do need to publish it. In order to publish it, you have to go down to the share button down here and click the down arrow and you'll see the publish map. So we're just going to click publish map. It's going to give you a little pop up box that says, are you sure you want to publish it? It makes it visible and we're going to publish this map. It doesn't really tell you that it published it. It just goes back to your dashboard here. Um, that's fine. You know it's published because it went back to this particular space. But now we have to make sure it's visible to the right people. So we're going to click the share button again. We're going to click sharing settings this time. And what you immediately see is that anyone on the web can view it and that it also defaults as your email address, your Google email address, if that's the one you used, as the administrator. But I want a link to share. Because what I'm going to do with this link is I'm going to post it into my lesson plan, the next part of this project. So it immediately, when I click that, it adds another item up here, another line with a little link that says anyone who has the link and it defaults to can edit. We don't want anyone with the link to be able to edit. Um, this would be used if you were collaborating with a group or something like that. But in this case, we just want it to can view. So you click the down button, you get the little box, you select can view. Now you can either copy and paste this link somewhere where you can get to it later, or you can come back and get this link when you are finished with your lesson plan. And that's all we need to do. So click done. And if you go back to your dashboard using this left arrow, um, it's called the My Maps button. And you go back, you should see your map on your dashboard. It takes a second. So this is the one I did a minute ago. I've done one previously, but this is the one I did a minute ago. So this is the one that I need. And you can see it has a link right here. So if I needed to grab that link again, I don't have to go all the way in. I can just grab it from here and it gives me a little copy button. So when you need this, you can just come back and uh, it should be right there. That's it. That's how you create a MindMeister concept map. If you have any questions or you need assistance, please, please, please contact me, email, um, message me. I prefer that you text me if you have uh, are struggling with this, I greatly urge you to contact me as soon as possible. Thanks for watching and good luck with your concept maps.